going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. At times you won't want to come out the house. It's hard living. Life is hard. It's hard handling just the tragedies of life. It's hard. When you're working on something and, and you put everything you have in it, and it doesn't work out, you lose your money and other people's money. It's hard. You will go through things and while you're going through them, you can't understand why it's happened to you. See, the point is, you don't know how much future you've got. What's gone is gone. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Some of you have had divorces. Some of you um, have probably had bankruptcies. Some of you have had terrible things happen in the past. But what's gone is gone. It's in the past. And to spend your time focusing on the past is to spend the only thing that you've got, and that's what's right here, right now, because the sand never stops running. This is all we've got. And to spend your time now thinking of what happened there is making absolute certain that the future's going to be the same as the past. I don't suppose many of us spend a lot of time thinking about that. A lot of us spend a lot of time making that error. Now you can either accept that or you can get to work. That's all it is. You just begin. You do the math. You solve one problem. And you solve the next one. Whatever drama you may be dealing with, this is not the end of you. No matter what it is, it is not the end of you. You can't quit now. And the only way out is through. All you do is you fall down, get back up again. Fall down, get back up again. Fall down, get back up again. That's how you win. You gotta be bold in life, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not bold, if you're not standing up inside yourself, if you're not willing to call into being the highest and the strongest that's within you when you're facing life's challenges, life will trample you. But see, when you discover the truth of this goodness, this power that you have within you, that truth will set you free from ever being a victim in life. That truth will enable you to handle things with a level of equanimity that will surprise you. Getting unstuck means that you are going to start living life on your terms, rather than just gliding through every day on automatic. That you have a special power within, that you know that things are going to get better for you. You know that you can handle this. And because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to decide that I'm going to go all out. Now listen to me. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as you waking up, you still in the game. As long as you alive, you can still make it happen. As long as that breath in your nostrils boo, you still in the game. You still can win. Now get your butt up. Why do you keep crying? Why me, God? Why did I get MS? Why did I get cancer? Why did my mama die? Why did I get fired? Listen, you got put through that because what that does, that tension produces greatness. Stop running from it and run to it. Lions don't cry. Lions don't give up. Lions don't quit. Lions hunt. That's what we do for a living. We turn tragedy into triumphs. never obtain any substantial measure of material wealth if you insist upon living your life as if you are looking back through your rearview mirror on your automobile. Nevertheless, it seems to be a very common error which many people have turned into a hammer. Let the dead bury the dead. Let it go. I don't care how bad it was, let it go. Five years from now, ten years from now, when you look back in retrospect at that terrible thing that's happened, you're going to find it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to you. Advancement of all kinds is preceded by a crisis. The greater the crisis, the greater the opportunity for advancement. Or you could put it another way. You could say, out of all confusion comes order. A higher degree of order than that which existed prior to the confusion. Because you see, the confusion was a learning state. 
Remember, I was pointing out that business is fun. It really is. I see business as a game. It's a game we're playing. We play to win. And when we're winning, we're having fun. And when we're losing, we're learning. Let's treat both of the experiences exactly the same. They're learning experiences. Now we say, remember the old adage which says, let the dead bury the dead. Stop looking back on your life and worrying about the things which have already occurred and which you can no longer alter. It's like trying to change the time you got out of bed this morning. You're never going to be able to do it. That stands for eternity. You cannot go back and change it so that you cannot let it go. Pursuing that kind of mental activity will never lead to anything worthwhile, any worthwhile accomplishment in your life. You should understand, moreover, that all accomplishments in your life, you should understand, moreover, that all of the great achievers of the past have been visionary figures. They did with their life what, like Scott was saying, he does with his music. He heard it in here. They see their life in here. They're building visions of a great future. We've got a vision of a great company. We've already got a great company. We want a better one. We serve a lot of people. We want to serve more. And as we do, we see greater rewards. Because when we receive greater rewards, we become more comfortable, more creative, and we can provide more service. It's a beautiful cycle that we're in. Looking into the past is a self-doom-fulfilling cycle. You just keep getting it worse, worse, worse. We've all done it, so we know what it's like. These visionary figures were men and women who projected into the future, and they did not belabor over things which had already passed. They thought of what could be rather than what already was, and then they moved themselves into action to bring these things into fruition. there were tips for success, everybody would have been successful. There are no tips for success. Only those who are not so successful, or those who are not successful, think somewhere, if you read 10 points in a book, you're going to be successful. We need to understand this. If you want to be successful, don't seek success. What you seek is competence. If you enable yourself and if you do something well, other people will say you're a success. If you think, I'm a success, it's foolish, isn't it? You're doing something, and you're doing it well. Other people in the town, or in the country, or in the world, people will say, oh, he is doing something really successful. They're looking up to you. That's fine. You look up to yourself. That's madness, okay? You don't seek success. You seek empowerment, you seek competence, you do it the best that you can do. You cannot do as well as somebody, but you can do the best that you can do. So if you do your best, if your best is good enough, the world will recognize. If it is not, you will be happy. So what does success look like? What does it take? Well, you know, I know family and friends who always have their breakfast on time. And after breakfast, of course, they must have coffee. After coffee, of course, they must light up a cigarette and sit there nicely because they're trying to make coffee. And then they will go to work and come back home exactly on time for lunch. Eat lunch, rest for one or two hours, sleep, then evening have one tea, then smoke, and then again go to work. And at 8 o'clock, 8.30, they're back home for dinner. And then maybe other things to drink, this and that, whatever. But those who have been very successful, either in music, sport, art, business, or spiritual process, doesn't matter what, those people never know when they ate, when they slept, when they got afternoon rest. So, those who are committed to being successful with whatever they're doing, one important aspect of their life is they're not settling down wherever it's a bit comfortable. Because comfort will happen when they lower you to in the grave. Very comfortable. Right now, it's about ensuring that there is profound experience and there is impactfulness of activity. Because if they had given you a limitless amount of time, you could do all those things. Nothing wrong, I'm not against them. But they gave you such little time with such tremendous potential of being human. That's the problem for every one of you. Your life is precious, isn't it? It's a precious life. If something is precious, where do you want to invest this life? 
because what you call as my life is just a certain amount of time and energy, isn't it? As you sit here, your life is ticking away, or no? What is ticking away is not time. What is ticking away is your life. So, this energy that you call as my life, how are you going to invest it? Because if you're doing something truly worthwhile, it gets over before you know what happened. Only if you're doing something worthless, it feels like a long life. Have you noticed this? On a particular day when you're very happy, 24 hours poof. <laughs> it went off like that, like a moment. You are miserable, 24 hours feels like 10 years. Have you not noticed this? So, only miserable people will have a long life. Joyful people, life goes away like that if it's a couple of days. It passes away like that if you are creating or creating the other So, one thing that every young person can do is, without the influence of the peers of your own age group, without the influence of your professors, your parents, without any kind of influence, somewhere you must stay by yourself at least for two, three days. What is it that I want to invest this precious life into? What is it that will be worthwhile today, and worthwhile after 50 years, for me to invest myself into, to invest your life into? that whatever it is however small big it doesn't matter if you see that this is something truly worthwhile and you invest your life in that this will be a life of fulfillment 